Welcome to the Featured Anime Podcast. I'm your host, Jack. And I'm Rick. And today we are talking about the Junji Ito collection or the Ito Junji collection, depending on how you want to phrase it and word it. But it was a uh, recommendation to us by Jeb from our Discord. And it was Mm. in preparation and to help us get into the wonderful horror spirits of. Halloween, but one way to put it. before that, we were uh, talking about uh, the longest breath held and some of the shows that we uh, kind of are looking forward to a little bit in the upcoming season. You want to catch a part of that water conversation? Patreon.com slash featured anime podcast. A dollar a month will get you bonus content plus some other perks. And now on to the meat and potatoes that uh, I watched that you didn't watch from uh, from our discussions a little bit oh, yeah. ago. Proudly did not watch. And guess what? Won't watch either. It was uh, 12 episodes plus two OVAs. It came out in January 2018, ran all the way through March 2018. Uh, producers for it are Nippon Columbia. Uh, Pony Canyon Enterprises, Muse Communication, Crunchyroll SE Anime Fund uh, also had a part in this. And the studio was Dean. It's based off of a manga. Its the, its uh, genres are psychological drama, horror, mystery, and supernatural. Sounds about right. Well. I'd also add horrifying. Well, horror is a part of horrifying. I would, uh, mm-hmm. I would mm-hmm. assume. Mm-hmm. 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 So PTSD ensuing. Uh, you know, just, you know. Yeah, maybe for you. Not so much for me. I watched it and there were a couple couple mm. of episodes that just like kind of like rubbed me the wrong way. And it was just like kind of a, one of those episodes where it was like, come on. I was anxious, but not anxious because I was scared. I was more anxious because I was like, dude, just do this or or just do that. You know, they the character wasn't in my mind, acting the way I would have wanted him to, it was more of like a letdown. So I guess I can see that. The way that I saw it, I, I rolled into it expecting, you know, light horror. I, I read what the, the the not titles, but the the subclasses were, and I was like, okay, you know what? I don't do scary stuff typically. I'll give it a shot. Maybe it won't be completely disgusting and and grotesque. And mildly no. infuriating. Right. Well. And I was wrong. The The thing about this show is, or this collection is, it is just that. It is a collection of several stories from Junji Ito. You know, I think a big part of it for me was the fact that it was all together. Individually, I think they'd be fine. If I was to watch them week to week, I think it'd be okay. But because I had access to the whole thing, I think that's what did it to me because it just started stacking. And I made the mistake of watching it specifically at night because I told myself, you know, I want the experience. I, I think if I prof- if I, I convey an, an appropriate experience, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. one, our audience will like it, and two, um, I'll I'll be able to speak on the same terms as you. Yeah. However, no. <laughs> N- no. No? I did watch it at night in the dark by myself with headphones and cranked up hoping for that horror experience that I also oh crave mm. that I that I just ha- am apparently having a hard time getting because some of it was just uncomfortable and Well, my biggest problem is, yeah, it was uncomfortable. Fine. All right, cool. I I can handle discomfort. But it's when, like, when they've got the weird phobias they're playing on. Each episode is two relatively short-ish short stories. Yes. Indicating one horror story here, one horror story there. And, like, okay, so do you remember going, you, you might not have had this in your school, but everyone I talked to who's of... My age or a little older specifically remembers things like Faces of Death. 
They specifically remember there was a book in elementary school. Mm-hmm. It, it, it damn near was in every library. I grew up on the West Coast. Out here, people are saying the exact same book, which is kind of creepy, but understandable. And I have no idea why the, 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 the library even stocks this book. It was a mythical book to begin with that you had to like kid it at the right time. You had to know who got the book, when they were returning it to open it up. And it was this, I'm not going to say it was a black book, but it in my mind was a darker colored book with writing on it. That was kind of scary. And when you open it, there was a story in there of a chick who got bit on the cheek and eventually had spiders explode out of a pimple on her face. That kind of horror stuff. Mm -hmm, Um, mm -hmm. And like that, that stuff freaks people out. There was the, yeah, there was a story in there. There was one story in there about a scarecrow, which would fit perfectly in here about a kid who found this scarecrow in the barn and was like, I'm going to put you out to do this. And he's doing work in the field after the scarecrow's up, scaring the crows away, of course. And he's complaining about his work. And he wakes up this morning and the work that he was complaining about is completely done. And you're like, this is great. And he slowly starts finding out that he keeps going. You know the story? Yeah, I know the story. Eventually it turns into a horrific thing where, you know, be careful what you wish for kind of thing. Right. Yeah. I think Goosebumps well, even did a TV series on it at one point in time. Well, a, a lot of stories like that have been done at one point or another. And that's one of the things is a lot of the horror stories or a lot of the scary stories have been done in some facet, one way or another by someone else as well. May not be the exact same way. They may have told it a different way. But that's how it is. And this likes to play on some of those fears and some of those stories as well. But they also kind of give you a different aspect or or I want to say it kind of forces you to look at certain certain aspects of life a little bit more. So take the circus uh, one, for example. Right. Okay. Have you seen, uh, did you, I, I forget, did you even see that one? What, I, did you, I, the marionette one? The circus? Were there in a circus? Not the marionette, not the dolls. Probably not. Okay. That would have, that would have been a no for, no go for me. I don't like clowns. Well, um, it had nothing to do with scary clowns. You had three innocent clowns and one of them dies in the beginning by falling off the ball. But the thing is, it's the ringmaster is, basically a demon playing on the hearts of everyone and everyone's trying to prove their worth for the only female in the circus. And they're dying in front of people like they, they are dying in front of people. So, and same thing for the, uh, for the marionette ones, you know, it's like, Hey, you know, you can let people control you and, and do whatever it is they want you to do and have a life and have it be in such a way that is more comfortable. But in the end, you're not in control of anything. Yeah, that was actually a pretty cool little story with a moral, with, with, a, with a thing you can take away. Mm-hmm. Like, yes, the way that the brothers saw it was there was a master and puppet, marionette and a puppeteer. In reality, the marionette wanted the puppeteer to do stuff, right? Mm-hmm. So... Eventually, he's like, oh, well, I want power. This is how I saw it. I want power. In order to get power, I have to give up power. Make them think that they're in control and I'm doing this. Turns out it's just an evil doll. Oh, yeah. More than anything else. But still, crazy, crazy stuff. And I feel like if you really dig into each episode or each story, there is an underlying, I want to say, tone to each one. One that will inevitably actually give you a uh, actual feedback or or lesson to be learned from it. So the one for the ringmaster going back to the circus one that I was talking about, everyone's striving for her, for the girl and you're, they're being, you know, they're letting their lust get the better of them. I can have that. I can have her. I can be married to her. Oh yeah, I will totally do this. And they're just letting their, their emotions, their, their lust for her run wild. And in the end they're dying. They're trying to do these feats of, you know, whatever it is, trapeze, balancing, knife throwing, what have you 
And if they are above that, or if they are, you know, the star of the show, the ringmaster tells them that, that, uh, she will be theirs. Everyone dies. (laughs) And then he immediately asks the audience, Hey, who wants to be part of the show? And then you will be able to have her if you are the star of the show. Really? So was there ever any star of the show? No, because any, all the any stars one died. person, one guy, he's like, I am the star of the show. And he outlined everyone or, or a person with knives. And then after he did that, he goes, are you sure? Are you really to basically say, I don't think you are the star of the show. And then he couldn't really throw the knives and he killed the person he was throwing the knife at. And he still wasn't, you know, he still didn't give up. He was still saying, no, I am the star of the show and started throwing knives up in the air while he was laying on the ground. And then he ended up dying because he stabbed himself in the heart with a knife. Dear Lord. That's all I can say. Like that's people dying out here for love. Right. <laughs> you know, uh, what about the next door? Uh, next door, next door neighbor. That was creepy. That was creepy. Um, that was creepy. And the moral of that story thought, is don't interact your with business. your neighbors. <laughs> exactly. Mind your business right. and don't interact with your neighbors. Well, no, I was looking at that and I thought it was kind of weird because originally this old gypsy woman was just horrifically disfigured. And then the longer this story went on, the, the more possessive she got but the more body you saw of her and she had an ex- incredibly shapely figure. And the only thing I could think is potentially like lust is a sin of sorts, like lusting after your neighbor. Cause she was like, I just want to see you. I just want to see what you look like. You're, you're so beautiful. Come here. I can almost reach out and touch you like really, really creepy, but what they were going for. But more to the point, it, I thought it was, representative of desire, lustful Mm -hmm. desire, because he was not reciprocating at all. He was terrified, but she was very much into him. So yeah, yeah, that was, and the the, the way the house got defigured was creepy. Just, oh, I'm so close. I'm getting closer. My arms can almost reach. And I'm thinking I'm going to see this beast with massively long giraffe arms, you know? No, the house was like, let me help you get this boy. Yeah. And every and and this is the 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 cool thing about it is like we were saying earlier, each story is an individual story and there's two per episode. So you don't really focus on one story or one theme all the way through. It is multiple themes all the way through with each one being individual. So you could, in effect, watch half an episode, come back later on, decide you want to watch something different and go to a completely different episode and watch the second half of it. And you're not going to miss anything. Now, I do have a and now I I will say this. All right. Which got me thinking. And I I did ask this on Discord and the, the answer was not that we know of or no. But so one of the characters, uh, Suichi. It's like the the creepy boy. He was in episode one. Yeah, he had more than one episode dedicated to him. Right. He had a couple episodes. He had, uh, I think, two or three, actually. I only saw two. I was actually going to ask you about him. Um, what's interesting is, you remember the creepy, tall, lanky model? Yes. She was in one of the episodes with him. It's three the episodes. Last episode. Yeah, uh, because... He was spreading rumors and everything like that. And and you know how in the first uh, episode that we see, he's like delusional in his head. Everyone loves him type thing. In the third episode, he's able to spread rumors about himself and everyone starts liking him because of it. And then they find out, obviously, that he's full of crap. But wow, uh, he he starts this rumor. He's able to start a rumor about going up to this mud swamp and, and everyone, you know, it's for beauty and everything like that. And this one girl who was telling him he was creepy to leave him alone actually went up there because people started believing like some of the other rumors that he was saying. And she went up there. Creepy model lady comes out of the mud while he was taking a picture and she starts attack, starts going after 
Suichi, and they kind of cut it off there. So you don't know what the end result was. Just that. Oh, you know she don't give up. You no, know no, she, she does not give her prey yeah. up. So he's dead. Yeah. Well, she came I, I up, think... popped up, and said, uh, "said you know, I am a professional model. You can't take pictures of me without going through my whatever." And they kind of left it at that with her getting ready to go after him. So my question is, and the reason why I I brought up that one specifically is because it makes me think that all these stories are somehow intertwined, or at least a nice chunk of them are intertwined with each other throughout. Mm. Like probably like a chunk of them are are probably within the same universe. So I can, I might be able to follow that if only because there was an episode where you could shift universes. Right. So, which is why I said probably only a section of them because, and the only reason why I think this, I would have not thought that if there wasn't a crossover between Soichi and a model, I would have not thought that I would have thought they would have all been individual, but what if they, what if a, a section of the stories are all intertwined with each other? It's possible. It's possible. There's one, underlying factor that that goes throughout we just don't know what it is it is highly possible but they're just so different yeah so different now there's a a phobia i sent you a text message because i'm gonna butcher the name uh tripophobia tripophobia uh fear of holes in skin yeah strong physical uh aversion and emotional reaction to seeing patterns made up of holes or spots uh bigger clusters or circles the more uncomfortable they uh they feel i don't have that but i was uncomfortable uncomfortable i gotta throw every syllable into that because that's how much discomfort i felt so there's uh i think episode two or three there's this jade thing that turns you into a holy person literally and then bugs come in and they they think they're home and and their home is you and you could feel them eating and moving and and it's just insanely bad anyway the the character of that's best friend finds the source of this curse he shows up a little later and his eyeball is hovering between his normal eye and a hole. And it, it keeps bobbing up and down. And it's just horrifying. Just yeah. straight. Uh-uh. Yeah, it was. That was weird. And but here's the interesting thing, right? Uh, so the main character for that episode, his grandfather died from that. And a doctor just randomly came up, started doing injecting and started seeing bugs and insects and everything like that. His friend come over and they started reading the journal and and they they looked over and they saw the girl, the neighbor girl who had the same problem as his grandfather. But then his friend has the problem and you see the girl later on and she's completely cured, which means that it only affects the last person it touched. And if you don't die before. Uh, someone else touches it, then you'll be completely cured. I feel like that's a lie. False hope, if you will. Well, it's not a trend call. It's it's not false hope. I mean, like it's, it's just being hopeful because he literally, the girl literally survived and was okay because his friend ended up dying from it. Could it be because she never actually touched it? She was just close to it. No, she touched it because the grandson was also close to it too. And he was fine. He was touching his grandfather and he was fine and he was closer to it than she ever was. And again, he was fine. So what you're saying, as long as you don't touch it, you're fine. And if you do touch it, chuck it at someone you don't like. So it smacks him in the head and run like hell. Creepy. Sorry. I was having flashbacks. Creepy. Mm -hmm. I don't like it. I don't like it at all. Please let's think. Let's talk about a different one because that's well. All right. Yeah, I'm just I'm having difficulty trying to remember which ones up to up to that point. So which was the one that gave you the nightmares and that made you st- like stop completely? So the 
the one with the bug that didn't quite give me a nightmare, but it is the, so I found the shorts afterwards to be unbelievably more scary or more disturbing than the longer versions of the first ones. The one that got me was the slug girl, the one where she had a slug in her mouth and then she oh, turned yeah. into the shell essentially. Yep. yep. Um, that one freaked me out, but I had, so due to some trauma back when I was a kid, before I can remember it, I've always been afraid of the dark irrationally. So like I had to have my little sister walk me down the hallway in my home to turn on some lights. Cause that's just, I saw stuff. Okay. Not that I was like, I see dead people, but like, I guess when I was a kid, I, I was not the easiest to deal with. And one of my babysitters would lock me in a, in a closet until my parents got home. Right. So I don't remember it, but I don't do dark very well. If I have to, I have to mentally prepare myself. I have to mentally tell myself that I'm an adult. This is stupid. There's nothing here and move on. Basically sack up and get doing right. 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 If I don't, if I don't have to, I'm not gonna like, if I have to be the bigger person, I will. It is what it is. I just turn a switch in my head and I'm in work mode. It's, I got to get it done. Right. However, however, if I'm alone, you better believe I'm under the covers. Which is the one, which is the one that deals with darkness. I don't remember which one that is. No, I'm just, that's, they're, they're all at night. The, the, the one that right. messed me up, <laughs> the one that messed me up the most. Um, so the, the, the slug one, disgusting. Right. Um, the one that got me the most was that, dark dude walking down the road telling people that they'll never find love. Oh, that one. The, uh, okay. The fortune teller, the cross crossroads fortune teller. Yeah, I gotcha. So after that one, I was, I, I, I watched it at night, of course, cause I'm like, it's right before bed. I got to get it done. And I, I pass out somehow in the dream, something happens to where I'm in an altercation. And in order to save somebody, I get shot in the chest with a shotgun. And I look down. It's not a shotgun. They got, for some reason, a a uh, blunderbuss, I think is what they call it. It's the shotgun that cones out. Old school. Super old school. It doesn't have buckshot in it. It's got a knife. And the knife got me in the heart. And I had to write down my mother's phone number. And I couldn't remember anything else. And when I was writing it down, it wouldn't work. Like, my hands started to like shift into something else and I couldn't write. And I was like, tell my mom this, tell my tell her to call everyone I know. Cause I only got the, enough time to, oh, I was horrific. I only got enough time to write one thing down to try to convey to everyone I care about that. I love them. I hope they're okay. Don't worry about me. It was my choice. Um, that it, it was, and that freaked me out. Because when I woke up, it was still pretty. It's one of those dreams where you wake up and you're not sure if it's still a dream or not. Yeah, it's a lucid dream or, or yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, those, I like those dreams. Those are awesome. I love them. I don't like being shot. Like, it was weird. I've never once died in my dream, but I felt like I was. I felt like I was dying and I, and like the final bits right before passing on, I woke up. Well, if, uh, if anything else, I mean, like you could have been like Tomoe. And not die. Have you? Oh, uh, you yeah. didn't see that one? Did you see that one? Tomoe? Are you? T- Maybe. Which one was that? What about? The. the- so she's supp- supposed to be like. Oh, really yeah, yeah, yeah. Beautiful. The, the mind projection. The really beautiful one. And the guy paints her. And. Oh, no. I don't know about that one. Okay. <laughs> so that one, not only did it have an episode, but it also had. And two OVAs about 10 minutes each. So equivalent to one more episode mm-hmm. uh, that explained her story, which was interesting. Uh, but bas- basically Tomoe. So in the episode that you saw Tomoe, she said she was supposed to be beautiful, really beautiful. And she shows up to the sky's uh, art gala saying no one's ever really able to capture my beauty. And it's an artist. Mm-hmm. And so he paints her and he paints the likeness of her like cherry. Like it's like iconic. And she gets pissed off and upset. She's like, that looks nothing like me and walks out. And so he's like going through withdrawals 
Like he just did some cocaine, a massive amount, like Scarface style cocaine, and he can't <laughs> get enough of Tomoe after that one incident. Like wow. he craves her. He's like, I gotta have her. I gotta find her. I need to draw her. Just one more drawing, just one more, and just completely goes off his mind. Well, he finds out that another artist, a uh, sculptor, is has been doing it, and he they showed a picture of her. And when he sees the picture of her, he goes, that is her. That's her. Now, the other guy who's showing him the picture doesn't bat an eye or anything like that. He just says she's beautiful. But when you when you we look at the picture, she has two faces. Oh, like a normal face and like a demonic face type thing or or whatever. Uh, and so is he that goes, what was pictured? Is that what you saw in the painting? The two faces? The second painting. Yeah. Oh, okay. So he did a second painting. He so he goes to the goes to where the guy is, and he actually he's able to get Tome away, and he paints her, and sh- you see the two faces in there. Now the the creepy thing about Tomoe is is like he lost his mind. The artist lost his mind, and he killed her, and chopped her into pieces, and those pieces started coming to life and started spouting other Tomoes. No. So to make it even better, Tomoe was like 16 years old. And you find out in the OVAs that she was pregnant by the teacher and the te- and she was like in a relationship, was dating one of the boys, but didn't want to date him anymore. And so they got an altercation and she fell off this cliff because they were on a road trip. And all the girls and guys were there standing around. And so the teacher says, I have an idea. We can't go to the police with this. We have a problem. So what we all need to do is solve our issues. Girls, go wait over there. Boys, strip down to your chonies. Let's chop her up and we'll teach you about the human anatomy at this time. And so they they, they chop her up. And she, she wakes up while they're getting ready to chop her up. And so they stab her in the neck she kill her <laughs> because she wasn't dead she was just unconscious and they chop her up and they set the body and there's like 42 they chop her up into like 42 pieces mm-hmm. and hand every one of the students a part of the body and say you have to go and dispose of this and make sure it's not traced back to you that's horrific what's really horrific is one of the pieces washes up on a beach and you see it in a cave With her kind of like standing there with her head and just looking all kinds of funky grown into another person, which means there are 42 more Tomoys running around out there. She's Wolverine. Yeah. Uh, Well, I would say she's an excess of that because Wolverine ain't going to start spouting other Wolverines. If he get if his arm gets chopped off, his arm just grows back. Right. I don't know if you and I've had this debate before, but yes, in in theory, if someone gets chopped off, it regrows. But what happens if you cut them directly down the middle? Is is there now two? Well, here's the other thing, right? Here's the other part of it. The animantium. That's true. No, no, no. Hang on. They, they, I think if I remember correctly, they delved on this a little bit, but they also put it to where he was able to come back from a single cell in the comic. Yeah, so, no, a single, so, single. So like, it doesn't. Yeah. What I'm saying is, it does not matter if you smash her or anything like that, because that just means there's more body parts for her to grow from. No, I get that, but going on to Wolverine just for half a second, because you, you, well, she's going through what we're trying to figure out with Wolverine. She's got six, forty-two different pieces, <laughs> all going to grow and be. This is it the same person? Is it a different memory? Is it like, is it a no, it's fresh the same slate? person. No, it's the same person. They're all the same person. So what you're telling me is eventually this person's going to get chopped up so many times and so many. So if, if she knows what's going on, she can come through a mincemeat grinder and be like, I'm going to take over the world. Yeet. Right. Well, here's the thing. It's not just her. There's, and if I'm, if I'm not mistaken, that the, she's actually kind of a monster at the same time. And so the monster doesn't really care about that. They just care mm-hmm. about causing some havoc or issues because whenever someone meets them or meet her, she 
immediately injects chaos into their lives or they become infatuated and obsessed with her. Dear Lord. Because if that were the case, I mean, I would be, if if 100% honest, if that were the case, I'd be chopping off my arm every time it finishes growing back and just having an army. We'd be taking over the world. Army of Jacks. See, see, here's the thing. If you're that well, gone, it don't no, no, matter no, no, either. No. So no, this is this is where it becomes a thing. Do nail clippings count? Can can she grow back from a nail clipping? I don't know. Does it have to be flesh and blood? Because if 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 she has the ability to grow back, all you as the original need to do is one time chop your arm off. All right, cool. Now when that when your arm grows back and then you've got another body attached to the other arm into the minced meat grinder. You go because I'm the original. I'm the boss. Right? Well, here's the thing. They didn't specify that. So who knows? Time to experiment. I mean, I'm pretty sure she don't really care one way or the other. So no, but think about it. Like it'd be well, really you don't easy even need to do. I mean, like if, if that were the case, you could even say, cause you mentioned nail clippings. What do you have more of readily available hair? Exactly. So why not just do it off of your hair? So I'm assuming that there's a limitation to it unless they decide to write out that limitation and just completely God mode it, which sounds like it's possible. Could be. Yeah. Cause I, I could see you being like, well, Chop off the arm now. There's two jacks. Well, I don't want to have to go through that again. So if I can just, you know, draw and quarter you and then have five jacks show up because you got one from the head, one from, I don't know, six, one from the head, one from the torso, one from the each arm, and then one from each leg. Right. And now so, you're just like, here's some machetes. I'll be back. I want to see millions. Right. Well, here's the thing, right? Because you, you know, you, to, to further on this, right? Talking about memories. And here, let me tell you why she still has the same memories. Uh, because she went back to class the next day. It was like, hey, oh. everyone, how you doing? And people lost their mind. Understandably so. Right. I mean, if I saw someone I murdered and chopped up into pieces and threw the body away, walk back into class, I'd be a little weirded out, too. Therapy? Yes, please. Uh, yeah, no, I'd rather just be locked up in an in asylum. All right. She'd eventually well, run the asylum. True. Maybe with how manipulative she is. It's a pretty good possibility. God, that's scary. All right, sir. I think this yes. is a good spot. A scale of up to 10 for what you did see. How would you rate this? It did what it needed to do. It, it is there for the horror. It is there for the grotesqueness. It is there to cause discomfort, and it did everything it, it, it was required to do. It did everything what it set out to do. I think that if I was to watch this during the daytime, independently, like I- individual episodes, mm-hmm. um, or if I knew what the episodes were about, my, my problem was the not knowing, but that's half the thrill. You know what I mean? Um, I would probably give it a nine, nine out of 10 quality was superb story were fairly unique um kind of campy at times but yeah thoroughly enjoy thoroughly enjoyable as the story goes it just it did its job a little too well for me okay that's fair i'm not gonna go as high as you i'm actually gonna go with a five and the reason i'm going yeah i'm going with a five because it didn't do the job for me it did not it did not scare me i was hoping for some horror i was hoping to get scared uh, it, I some of the episodes I actually kind of found myself kind of nodding off to while I was watching it. Okay, it, it 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 didn't do it. It didn't really do it for me. I would recommend it, which is why I'm going with at least a five, and not any lower than that. Uh, the animation was good. It served its purpose, mm-hmm. just not my taste, not my style. Certainly not my style, but. It, in the creep factor alone, they did a damn good job. They just because we didn't like how they did it, didn't doesn't mean they didn't do a great job. No, they did a good mm. job. It's just not my taste. Mm. I mean, it, it served its purpose. I just think that maybe it could have done better or differently. And maybe I would have liked it more. Possibly. I don't know. But oh, yeah. uh, I mean, I feel like 
it, it was good. It was entertaining, but that's about it. I mean, it's episodic, so it's all right. I like the fact that they were all self-contained most of the time. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe, maybe I'm just hard to, hard to please, I guess. I don't know. I, every, every year I hope for something that'll just scare me or that'll give me that, that yes, this is a Halloween feel, or this is a horror feel. And this, uh, really didn't give me a, give me that. Nothing like seven, probably. Right. Nothing like seven. Yeah. Seven with um, Brad Pitt. What's in the box? Oh, right, 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 right. Yeah, that was truly scary for me because it felt like it was possible. It felt yeah, like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, I get you. I get you. A hundred percent. Um, Yeah, that was good. I enjoyed that. But yeah, so five. I'm giving a five. You know what? <laughs> maybe I'm li- uh, maybe I'm being a little too harsh. Maybe. Maybe I am. But you well, know was, what? I'm, I'm trying to get you to get up to at least a six, only because it, it deserves at least. So five for us, it's medium. You know, you're not going to toss it, not going to watch it again. But, you know, six means you're going to like, you know, you, you you wouldn't say no to watching it again with somebody else. Just if for another reason, to, if for nothing else, to see the reaction. No, I would have to have more reason than that to watch it again. Okay, so yeah, five is five is. It. I'm really surprised. I don't think we've ever been this far apart. No, we have. Sin the movie. Oh God! I mean, that wonderful, beautiful gem. If you all haven't seen that, you all need to go watch that movie. Anyways, before we get it, on that like, horse, no, 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 no. Let, let's get on that horse for just half a second. Sim or sin? Sorry, sin. It is. It, it goes beyond being bad. Like it becomes good. It's so bad. Exactly. That's how but, awesome it like, was. No, awesome should never be involved when, when talking about that. Hey, awesome is what? not a word in that vocab. Yeah, I don't. <clears throat> Sin, the movie is awesome. So for me, Junji in Ito collection was good. I won't watch it again. And I would have to have a solid, I would have to have a really good reason to watch it again. Not because it creeped me out, not because I was scared, but just because I just, it's not something that I would really want to watch again. I don't have the drive to want or, or desire to, it's just, I watched it. I'm done with it. I'll move on. It'll be in the rest of the of my mind. I may try to get someone else to watch it just for mm-hmm. kicks and giggles. Mm-hmm. I won't be there with them while they watch it because I'll be bored. Okay. Uh, I I won't get any entertainment out of it, but that's fair. That's why I'm going with a five. So uh, next week, sir, next week's predetermined. It is. And it is paranoia agent. Why does that sound familiar? We've it talked about out, that before. We have talked about it before and it came out on adult swim years ago. If I remember correctly too. Back in the days when uh, we were young and impressionable. Yeah, back when staying up past 10 o'clock meant it was adult time. Right? And that's what we're watching next week. We're watching Paranoia Agent. Uh, but that's all the time that we have for today. Hope you enjoyed this week's choice. Uh, a lot more than me, not as much as Rick. Uh, or maybe more than Rick. Who knows? Maybe, maybe yeah. we're just not doing it enough justice. Let us know, please. Let us know. We would love to hear from you. Uh, featured anime podcast at gmail.com at those anime guys on Twitter, featured anime podcast on Facebook. We are always on discord, or at least I am always on discord. Feel free to go on there, reach out to us, talk to us uh, link for that. will be in the show notes for you. Uh, if you want to catch some bonus content and everything like that, patreon.com slash featured anime podcast, a dollar a month will get you that bonus content and it would uh, help us out. Or if you want to buy yourself some swanky merch, shop.featuredanimepodcast.com. And until next time, I'm Jack. And I'm Rick. And I hope to God you're not half as scared as I was. <laughs> Later. <laughs>